Hello, historians and survival enthusiasts. Welcome back to History HQ, the place where forgotten innovations come back to life. Today we're unravelling one of the most underrated breakthroughs of World War II, a fabric so advanced it left canvas, tarps, and even today's synthetics eating its dust. It was stronger under strain, lighter to carry, and completely waterproof without a single drop of plastic or chemical coating. Soldiers called it the miracle cloth, and once you learn how it worked, you'll never look at your rain gear the same way again. By the early 1940s, armies weren't just fighting battles, they were fighting nature. The Pacific, the Arctic, the deserts, every front brought brutal weather that chewed through standard gear. Heavy canvas tents and oil-treated tarps turned into soggy, stinking liabilities once wet. In tropical zones, humidity stripped waterproofing off within weeks. In Arctic campaigns, frozen tarps cracked like glass. For soldiers, soaked fabric wasn't just uncomfortable. It was dangerous. Wet uniforms froze, rations spoiled, and diseases spread like wildfire. Something had to change. The British Royal Air Force faced the harshest version of this challenge. Their pilots often ditched into icy seas, where survival depended on staying dry for as long as possible. The standard flight suits? Useless. They became waterlogged sponges within minutes. So engineers went hunting for something revolutionary, a fabric that could breathe in dry air but seal up completely when wet. That's how the legend began. In 1941, textile researchers in Manchester achieved what most thought impossible. They created Ventile, a 100% cotton fabric that behaved like a living organism. When dry, it felt soft and flexible, but once rain or seawater hit, it transformed. The cotton fibres swelled, locking together so tightly that water simply couldn't pass through. No oil, no wax, no rubber, just pure, natural mechanics. The idea was genius in its simplicity. Instead of coating the surface, they re-engineered the weave itself. Using the world's finest Egyptian cotton, long, smooth fibres woven up to 400 threads per inch, they produced a material so dense that moisture couldn't force its way through once the fibres expanded. RAF tests proved its worth fast. Pilots wearing ventile survival suits could float in freezing Atlantic water up to 20 minutes longer than those in standard gear often the difference between life and death before rescue arrived. That single innovation changed aircrew survival forever. It didn't take long for ground troops to catch on. Arctic divisions used Ventile as outer shells because it stayed flexible in sub-zero cold, something synthetic fabrics couldn't match at the time. Desert troops wore lighter grades to block wind and dust without overheating. In jungles, commandos loved it because it didn't rot, mould, or get heavy with moisture. One British unit even stitched ventile ponchos that doubled as stretchers and ground cloths. Imagine that, one sheet of fabric serving as shelter, protection and medical gear all in one. What really impressed the troops was its resilience. Early nylon gear could melt when exposed to heat or sparks, but Ventile wouldn't even flinch. Ice slid right off it. It didn't stiffen, didn't tear easily, and didn't need constant retreatment like wax canvas. Once woven, it stayed ready for years. By the late 1940s, it had achieved cult status among those who'd used it. To this day, elite explorers and survivalists still wear ventile jackets because they value silence, toughness and reliability. 
qualities most modern synthetics can't deliver at the same time. Ventile is proof that, honestly, the smartest technology doesn't always come from a lab. Sometimes it's born from a loom. The beauty of it lies in its purity. No plastics, no laminates, no coatings, just cotton fibres engineered so perfectly that, well, nature did the rest. Hold a piece in your hand, and it feels like premium denim, soft, quiet, and alive. Yet it stands up to rain, wind, and snow, as well as high-end shell fabrics. It's sustainable before eco-friendly was even a word. During World War II, that wasn't ideology. It was necessity. This wasn't fashion design. It was life-and-death problem-solving under pressure. Here's where history meets practicality. If you're a survivalist or bushcraft enthusiast, you can recreate the principle of ventile right at home using traditional materials. Start with the densest cotton or linen you can find, something with a tight weave, around 300 threads per inch or more. Then mix boiled linseed oil with a touch of beeswax in roughly a 10 to 1 ratio. Warm it slightly, soak your cloth, and lay it flat under tension for two to three days to cure. When done correctly, you'll get a tough, flexible material that sheds water like a duck's back while staying breathable. It won't perfectly mimic Ventile's swelling trick, but it comes close. Another technique is to take untreated canvas and apply thin, diluted coats of linseed oil, letting each layer dry before adding the next. After several coats, the fibres tighten and resist water beautifully while remaining supple. Use it as a tarp, poncho, pack cover or ground sheet. Unlike modern plastic tarps, it won't rip in the wind or disintegrate in sunlight. And if stored properly, it can last for decades. That's durability through craftsmanship, not chemistry. Ventile isn't just a piece of military history. It's a lesson in how pure engineering and natural materials can outperform mass-produced synthetics. It reminds us that not every innovation needs to be new. Some just need to be understood. For historians, it's a glimpse into a moment when survival drove invention. For survivalists, it's proof that sustainability and toughness can coexist without compromise. And for everyone else, it's a challenge to rethink what modern really means. Because when you trace the lineage of outdoor gear, it all goes back to this, a handful of cotton threads woven so precisely that they changed the rules of the game. So next time you pull a tarp over your gear or zip up a waterproof jacket, remember that the first truly high-performance fabric wasn't born in a lab. It was born in the middle of a world war. Soldiers, pilots and explorers trusted it with their lives. And eight decades later, it still stands as a benchmark for what human ingenuity can achieve under pressure. That's the real miracle of Ventile, the fabric that refused to quit. If you enjoyed this deep dive into forgotten wartime innovation, make sure to subscribe to History HQ and share this story with a fellow history buff or survivalist. The past is packed with hidden genius, and here we make sure it never stays buried. Stay sharp, stay curious, and I'll see you in the next episode.